Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about that crazy game over in Ireland where Georgia Tech just took it to Florida State. For whatever reason, Florida State came out very, very flat and Georgia Tech dominated them for four quarters and came away with a win. Although it was a 24-21 win, that was a lot of domination on Saturday. But now let's get into where Florida State goes from here. What do they do? Because the reality is you just got punched in the teeth. And the other reality is you're not dead yet. You still have the chance to make the playoff. You still have the chance to win the ACC and do everything that you wanted to do going into this year if you're a Florida State fan and a coach for that team. So everything's on the table. Um, there's no doubt about that. The question is, how do you fix all of the problems that were shown on Saturday? Because there were quite a few of them, and they're going to have to figure them out rather quickly because there's not like there's a ton of landing area in this schedule. But let's get into this real quick, and it obviously starts with DJ. There's no two ways about that. Uh, DJ was 19 for 26, 193 yards, no touchdowns on Saturday, averaged 7.1 yards per attempt, and never completed the pass over 20 yards. That's not a great performance, plain and period. You know, maybe that's a fine performance for a team that's not named Florida State. If you're going to be a team that's competing for a national title, that is not nearly good enough, especially against a defense that was none too good a year ago. Now, they were great on Saturday, but let's be honest, there were a number of places that they should have been able to attack this uh, Georgia Tech defense. And the biggest thing for me is this O-line just has to be better. Uh, it was the biggest glaring need that they had on this team. This O-line was just downright bad for the majority of this game, and they allowed D a DJ to never get comfortable, and it was supposed to be the strength of this team. It was supposed to be one of those things coming out of fall camp was, man, this O-line looks good. Man, they're going to be able to move people, and we're going to be able to run the ball really aggressively. And frankly, that's the only way they're going to be able to win games throughout the year, if they're able to run the ball effectively. So they're going to have to figure that out really quickly. But the other part of this is get the ball out on the outside really quickly. You know, get the ball out of DJ's hands. Because although, you know, you don't want negative air yards uh, for your quarterback, that's not necessarily ideal by any means. You can get it done doing that. There is a possibility to get it done. It just takes more from that coaching staff. So guys like Ja'Kai Douglas, guys like Jalen Lucas, Hakeem Williams, who didn't play in this game because of injury, are hugely important. Because they are so special with the ball in their hands, because they can take a you know screen that's three yards behind the line of scrimmage and take it 75 yards for a touchdown, those guys are the ones that are going to have to really carry the weight going forward. We thought that Malik Benson was going to be the guy, and he had an okay game on Saturday. Day, but at the end of the day, you need guys that are special with the ball in their hands, and you need guys that you can get the ball in their hands very quickly. And I think Jalen Lucas might be the main example here because he's going to be very, very special. And then the other part of it is maybe just flash that quarterback run game just a little bit more. Maybe just give defenses a little bit more to think about when they're having to guard DJ because it's not that I think they're going to be crazy explosive when they add this uh, aspect to their uh, offense by any means, but. I do think it gives the defense just one more look to think about. One more thing to think about when that read option is happening or when that mesh is happening. That defensive end now has to think about DJ pulling it and going around the edge. And frankly, you're not in a place where you're playing good enough offensively to take play calls off the shelf or take a to take play calls out of your playbook. You absolutely need to exhaust all of your options going forward. So we'll figure out if they're capable of doing that. But I want to get back... Um, to this O-line, because the running game is going to be the thing of this team. There's no doubt about that. The way this team was going to win games going into the season and the way that they're going to win games going forward is play really good defense, run the ball, and be able to win games down the stretch with a couple of big plays. That's just the reality of Florida State right now. And we've talked about it the time and again. It's because when they went out in the portal this time around, they did not get Keon Coleman's. They did not get Jordan Travis's. They did not get Trey Benson's. They got DJ Hughes, they got Roydell Williams, they got uh, Malik Benson. It's not like those are bad players, but they are a step back from what you had a year ago, plain and simple. So you're going to have to run the ball. You're going to have to be able to impose your will, and man, did they not do it on Saturday. Now, through the first drive, they had runs of 8 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards, and 28 yards. They were absolutely dominating. They averaged over 10 yards a carry on that drive. They then went on throughout the entire game to average 3.2 yards per carry and never have a rush longer than six yards after that. So the reality was that first drive was all well and good. Those 15 scripted plays went absolutely beautifully. From there forward, they were downright terrible, and they got dominated on the offensive line, and Roydell Williams and Jalen Lucas and all of the running backs that they have and uh, Lawrence Tuafili, 
none of them really got into a rhythm. Tua Feely played the best game, and he didn't necessarily play all that great a game. So it was a very, very rough performance from this offensive line, and they got to figure it out one way or the other. I don't know if that's, you know, rotating guys. I don't know if that's changing up the way that you uh, play uh, this offensive line with less pulls and just more straight up. I don't know what it looks like. At the end of the day, you got to figure out how to fix this Uh, because no offensive line this year. DJ is going to look the same way he did on Saturday next week and the week after that and the week after that, and you cannot win games when that happens. So this run game is going to be the part of this team that puts them in a position to win, and right now the offensive line is putting them in a really tough position. Um, But on the other side of the ball, we got to talk about this defense because, frankly, from what I was seeing on Saturday, they have very little identity. Adam Fuller did not have a good idea of how he wanted to attack this offense, and a lot of that was because Buster Faulkner was so good at keeping them off balance and everything, but they have too many players for everyone to go silent. You know, Shaheen Brown led this team with 13 tackles on Saturday, I don't remember Shaheen Brown being a big part of this uh, game. Uh, uh, Patrick Payton, excuse me, was someone that, you know, came in as one of the best defensive players in the country. Didn't hear his name called a lot on Saturday. That cannot happen. When you have those players that are this elite, that are all American talent players, they cannot just not show up. And a lot of that was the play calling of Adam Fuller and not putting them in positions to win. But also, it was just them not playing the football that they need to play. And it came down in a lot of ways to that interior, that defensive line. Joshua Farmer and Daryl Jackson are two very, very good players. But obviously, the loss of Braden Fist this last year was clear and obvious. There was no doubt that this defensive line was not nearly as uh, forceful, not nearly as aggressive as they have been in the past. And that's something that plainly just has to change. Those two guys need to take big time steps forward because it's not like they have the biggest depth in the world. They have some good players behind them, but they're younger players and you're going to have to figure out one way or the other how you're going to go about this defensive line because it was supposed to be, at least as Pete Thamel put it, the best defensive line in the country. It was not even close to that uh, on Saturday. So they're going to have to figure it out one way or the other, whether it's rotations or just getting more out of the guys that they have. I don't know, but it's got to fix, and it's got to fix very quickly. And then you get into a couple other things uh, from that game, and one of the biggest takeaways for me was just the coaching was bad. Uh, Mike Norvell is a very, very capable coach, and that whole staff is very, very capable, and a lot of really good players, and Alex Atkins was suspended for this game, so maybe that played a uh, part, but the reality is the play calling was iffy at points. They missed a lot of points where they could have uh, really exposed the Georgia Tech defense. The motivation, as we talked about going into this, was an absolute nightmare from Florida State's perspective because, plain and simple, they were the team that wanted it less. They were the team that walked out on that field, and whether it was you know hubris or whatever, they didn't play as hard as they could have, um, and they got exposed because of it. So that's something that just plainly has to change. You know, you don't have Jordan Travis's on this team. You don't have Keon Coleman's on this team. You don't have Jared Versus on this team. That puts more on your coaching staff. They're going to have to be able to dial up the right play call for the right time and make sure that this team is in a position to win these games because the reality is you're not going to get bailed out by Keon Coleman on a long third down to win a, a game against Clemson. You're not going to get bailed out by Kalen DeLoach, you know, knocking the ball out against Clemson that you return for a touchdown. That's not going to happen this year because you don't have those players this year. You got to figure out a way coaching wise to bridge the gap. You got to figure out a way to out coach the other person on the other side because you might not have the talent that you had a year ago. Now, you still had the better talent on Saturday and you got outplayed, no doubt about it. But at the end of the day, these coaches just have to be better going forward. They have to make sure that the play calling is better, that the motivation going in is better, and that their rotations in a lot of ways are better going forward. Because if they're not, then a lot of the same thing is going to happen. They're going to get out-coached, out-efforted, and they're going to lose a lot of games that they absolutely should win. So it's going to be an uphill battle. There's no two ways about that. This team has a lot of things ahead of them, but as of right now, they got a Boston College game in about seven days, and they got to figure out a lot of things before they get into that game because there's a quarterback named Thomas Castellanos that is going to pose problems. He's going to be able to run the ball. He ran for a 1,000 yards a year ago. The dude can absolutely play football, and he's going to cause problems for this D-line that if they play the way they did on Saturday, it very well could go to 0-2. So this is something that they're going to have to figure out. Now, they are still alive. They are still in the college football playoff picture. There are a lot of people acting like the sky is falling over in Tallahassee, and in some ways it is. Maybe pieces of it are falling a la Chicken Little, but at the end of the day, 
this is a team that can still make the playoff. There is still a path to get there, and this is not by... I hope at least, not the finished product of this Florida State team because as we know, there are a lot of teams that play really bad football the first couple of weeks and then find their groove. Look at Alabama a year ago. If you watched them in week three and I were to tell you that's a playoff team, you would have called me crazy, plain and simple. So maybe that's what happened with Florida State, but they got a road that is not going to be too easy. Obviously, you take that loss early on. That does not help by any means. You got Boston College in a week, going to be a tough one that you're going to have to get through. Then you get a little bit of a bye, which is an absolute blessing but you head into a memphis game that is at home you absolutely should be able to win it that's a really good group of five team that is looking for that feather in their cap and they just smell a little bit blood in the water uh this weekend when they saw florida state go down so definitely one that they're gonna have to get ready for then you get cal at home and then the gauntlet starts you go to smu you got clemson at duke you got miami you got north carolina at notre dame florida at the end of the year there are so many games that are going to be much closer in the talent level than they were on saturday and florida state wasn't even able to overcome that so there's so many things that need to change for this team but the reality is everything's still on the table there's not a thing for this team that they cannot do this year. Uh, I know that that game was really ugly, and I know that game was left a lot to be desired for so many Florida State fans across the country, but at the end of the day, there is still a path to the playoff. You just got to really tighten the screws and get a lot of things in order very quickly, or you might just fall to 0-2, and then maybe there's not a path to the playoff. So it's going to be really interesting to watch this team. I think a number of things have to change, whether it's the O-line and D-line playing so much better than they did on Saturday, DJ being put in better positions to succeed, and also making those uh, positions for himself and just playing better football going forward. The running backs have to play better. The motivation has to be better. The play calling has to be better. There's a million things that they have to fix, but... At the end of the day, you still got time to fix them, and you still have a playoff that is very much in reach with an 11-1 and record. So it's a lot of things to fix. It's a lot of screws to tighten, but Florida State can do it. Um, there is an opening here where in the past, you know, you might have been dead after this weekend. You're no longer. You absolutely have the ability to bounce back and maybe even lose one more and find your way into the playoff. But at the end of the day, they got to figure a lot of stuff out and move forward and maybe even blow out Boston College just to get the wheels rolling just a little bit. But it'll be interesting to watch how this team moves forward and if they can get over what was a disastrous performance on Saturday. But we'll definitely uh, unfold that over the next couple of days as they get into Boston College and obviously throughout the year as they go through this. But we'll break down the rest of the Week 0 slate because it did not disappoint by any means. So we'll break it down right after this, so stick with us. 